Live from their home studios, please welcome the hosts of Dev Central Connects, John Wagnon and Jason Rom. Well, like our good front, our good friend, goodness, good friend Peter Silva just said, I'm John, this is Jason, and this is Dev Central Connects, where we connect with all of you, the Dev Central community. It's going to be a great show today. Jason, I'm excited. How are you doing today, my friend? I'm doing good. You know, anytime Peter introduces, I feel like I should be running out of a tunnel with fireworks going off. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, it's, it's awesome. But, yeah, be- doing well. There needs to be at least a minimum level of pyrotechnics in the background, you know, doing <laughs> doing something, right? So well, I'm, anyway. I'm I'm somewhat of a pyro, so lots of lots of fireworks, lots of fire. Yeah, no one ever no one ever said, hey, I think we have too many fireworks. That's never that those words have never come out of my mouth until like right now, of course. <laughs> That's right. Um, but anyway, good stuff, man. Well, hey, as we do every week, everybody, it's uh, it's great to see you all, and we want you to comment, we want you to interact with us, and we have an awesome show today. And let me tell you why you're going to be excited to be here today, to watch this show today. We are going to talk about iRules, what they are, why they're important. And then at the end, we've got a, we've got a, a cool little surprise we're going to drop on everybody. And it's just going to be a lot of fun to interact with all of you. And not just today, but we're going to carry this on. You'll see. We're, this is going to be a, like a continual you know, interaction. So, uh, so anyway, so we'll, we're, we've got a lot of, a lot of fun here today, Jason. So, um, man, I guess, uh, if you don't have anything, uh, to, to share at this point, I think we could, I think we could jump into this thing. What do you think, man? Well, in fact, I do have something to share. So no, for real, uh, you know what John's saying, we're going to carry this thing forward. Uh, we're going to do some lab days here and there. They're not all going to be I rules. We're going to look at automation, uh, with the, 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 uh, uh, automation tool chain, and we'll look at uh, I, there's a lab out on Cloud Docs, and right now it's it's built around our uh, UDF framework internal to F5. But you know, I think we could uh, extrapolate that out so that you could use um, it uh, externally. And it's around troubleshooting and Wireshark and all that. And I would love to do a lab on that because who doesn't need their Wireshark and T Shark skills refreshed occasionally? So uh, I look forward to that as well. <laughs> I would say all of us need a little sharpening on the shark, the wire shark, you know, uh, that's, that's, right. that's kind of, it's kind of like the fireworks comment, you know, no one ever said we have too many fireworks no one ever said, Hey, I, uh, I don't need any kind of refresher on wire shark. You know, I think, I think that's a continual thing, right? So, uh, so it's good stuff. Good stuff. Awesome, man. Yeah. Well, so yeah, we're, we're going to get into this. We're going to do, uh, today, uh, we're going to do I rules fundamentals. And before we do, however, we have a comment here from uh, uh, Aditya uh, about, you know, raise the hand because somebody asked who saved the day with an eye rule. So uh, I would love to hear about that in the comments. You know, what what made you a hero? And uh, I have I have some examples of that over the course of my career from my customer days. And also since working for F5, uh, you know, a, a lot of joy in discovering that, well, I don't know if I could make that work. Wait, I can make that work with an eye rule. And, and I did, and it was fabulous. And so, you know, we haven't talked about iRules in a really, really long time. And so yep. we're taking this opportunity uh, to do just that. That's right. That's right. It's going to be a lot of fun today, hopefully uh, somewhat informative. So, yeah, let's hop into iRules, you know. So I, I'll talk about this one for just a second. Turing completeness and computability theory. Those are big words. Don't fret, my friends. Don't worry. They uh, they're they're not that you know they're not they're not that scary. Effectively, what we're trying to communicate here with this slide, with you know variables and commands, math, conditional processing, iteration. There are things when you when you step into a programming language or a scripting language, which is which is what I rules are, which is what I rules is. Right? Um, it's a way to program the big IP then you're going to need to do things to the data to you know to the to the packets that are coming in to the information that's flowing through and so you're going to need to do things like hey i need to set variables i need to i need to you know execute commands on that data um, need to take some basic math uh, you know f- uh, function functionality those kinds of things so when when we list these specific items on this slide, we're simply saying, hey, these are all the things that you're going to need to do when it comes to um, scripting or programming 
uh, the big IP in the form of iRules. And so, uh, so as we step through what that looks like, just understand these are all things that you're gonna that you're gonna see and encounter and and interact with, right? Yeah, for sure. And so if you look at a lot of different programming languages, you can see here on the screen, we've got Perl, Python, uh, C, if you know, you're brave. Uh, we've got the, the Bash shell and PHP, if you're really brave. And of course, we have uh, TCL, which is the tool. John, it's the command language, right? Because right. I corrected you on a stream and I was wrong. Yeah. So it's like it, I said, no, no, John. It, no, I think we we're at a user group. But I corrected it's like, hmm. no, it's the tool control language. But no, it is the tool command language. And yeah. so that is what iRules is based on. So you can see if you go back to the to the Turing completeness and, and all these different things, you can accomplish that in all these languages. Uh, mm -hmm. iRules just happens to be based on TCL. And so we'll get into uh, a little bit about that later. Yep, that's right. That's right. So a bit of a rant here <laughs> with Mr. Megaphone down there. Um, so the 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 idea or the point of this slide is you need to comment your code, right? So I know it says, unless you're the last programmer on the planet, then you need to make sure that you put comments in your code. And that is so that other people coming behind you will understand, or dare I say, you yourself will understand because you're gonna, not going to remember what you did yourself, right? Uh, <laughs> and and comment, comments, uh, Jason, correct me if I'm wrong, they don't count against you in terms of you know execution speed and all that stuff, right, with iRules. So you can comment you know, to your heart's desire and it's not going to... It's not going to impact any kind of performance or, or any of that. Correct. Yeah, I mean, it does, you know, if, if you're excessive, it does count against your object size uh, on the big IP, but it, it's not going to hurt you on performance on the wire uh, because right. that is not compiled down into the bytecode. And uh, incidentally, with, with you know, uh, I will not go on a super rant with commenting, but I will say John and I filmed uh, these, uh, these like 20 to 30 second uh you know, mockumentary uh, in the style of the office on uh, the more, you know, from MDC. And it's yeah. like, we called them the more you code. And uh, I'll share the link to that playlist um, in the description of the show. But anyway, we have uh, several of those, one of which is commenting. And so That's I, right. I, I think you'll appreciate those. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we had those a lot of fun. Were... We had a lot of fun doing them. Yeah, those were fun. Those are fun. And so, yeah, so if, if you're kind of looking at, you know, John mentioned scripting languages, there's compiled languages, and, and then you're all the way down into the zeros and ones uh, down in assembly. The um, I rules are kind of in between interpreted and compiled because if you think about running a Python script, um, at least one that hasn't been also compiled down to bytecode, every time you run it, it's got to, um, it, it's got to uh, compile it down to bytecode and then run it. Uh, with I rules, uh, they're all compiled at save time. And so it doesn't have to do that interpretation. Uh, you think about every connection arriving at the big IP, and if you had to interpret that and then execute on it, that that could get uh, that could get very painful very fast. So, <laughs> kind of lives in between that interpreted and compiled land. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Closer closer to Dilbert than the HAL nine thousand, right? So that's that's yeah. always fun. That's always fun. Well, there you go. Boo found it. The more you code playlist. So the more yeah, you go code check playlist. that out. That those were a lot of fun. And maybe we'll yeah. have to do a, a second series of those around uh, automation or something. Yeah, the more you automate or you know whatever, right? So yep. awesome. Well, hey, I, I know we've kind of talked around this and we've kind of talked to this a little bit as well. But what is an I rule? It's a programming language integrated into TMOS, the Traffic Management Operating System. And so the heart of it is you, the, the, the administrator of the big IP, you can program this thing, you know, you can actually affect the traffic on the wire, which is super cool and it's super powerful. And so this, uh, you can see there on the slide, you know, it gives you the ability to, to intercept, to inspect, to do all kinds of different stuff to the traffic itself. Uh, so, I mean, you know, the sky's the limit on what you can do with this iRule programming, you know, scripting capability, uh, but it's built into the big IP and you have it at your fingertips. And as some people say, there's an iRule for that. There's no, or, or maybe said differently, there's nothing that an iRule can't do. You can do anything with an iRule, all of those things, right? That's right. I'm thinking Emperor Palpatine, you know, where he's like, you know, uh, force lightning on on Mace Windu, unlimited power. You know, that's uh, <laughs> that's an eye rule for you. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. All right, and then so then, why should you care? Why do you care? Well, I know you care because you care, right? You're a caring person. Um, <laughs> but 
you can see there, I mean, these are just a few. This is a this is not an exhaustive list, of course, but um, you talk about availability and security. Uh, you know, man, there's there are so many. We, we won't list them all, but just from a security perspective, uh, let's say that all your back end applications need to have, you know, some kind of a, uh, you know, something installed or some some feature updated or, you know, uh, software patch updated or whatever. Did you know that on the big IP, you could make some changes from a security perspective that then would affect all of the back end servers? Um, and you can do that in an eye roll about that fast. I know with like uh, when Heartbleed came out or a number of other security vulnerabilities, we were able to to implement iRule functionality. And it's a, it's a very powerful, very quick solution that would then allow you to, to make the, you know, the, the longer term fix on the back end, but you can do, you know, you can put that, that uh, very, very fast, very powerful, you know, fix in place very, very quickly. Um, so anyway, and then obviously there, there's the performance, there's capabilities, you know, you, the user experience can be enhanced, uh, you know, because there's limitations on, on what the back end application may or may not be able to do, you can you can take it to that next level there with an eye rule as the traffic come comes and goes. You can affect it on on both sides. So super powerful. All right. So yeah, if we're we're gonna get into the fundamentals of eye rules now. And we'll start with something that is less native to TCL, and that's this concept of an event cycle. And and so eye rules work on on events. Uh, so as things happen, like a TCP connection completes or an SSL, uh, you know, header or an SSL connection is, is part of that. You have to establish the session and key exchange and all those things. You can think of it as, you know, the stack is is hitting those points in time as it's processing. And if you have the profiles associated to that uh, particular type of, of protocol, then then the 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 uh, I rule will be listening at that point in time, and then you can act on that. And so here we have an example of um, a a connection coming through here. And so uh, there's a three way handshake here, and at that point you get the the client accepted event. And then after that has happened, then an HTTP request comes in, and that fires off uh, if you are uh, capturing TCP payload that would fire off the client data. Um, and it will fire off the HTTP request events. You can access data at, at those places. And then as soon as that um, has been established, depending on the profile that you have, uh, then it will pick a server at this point. And that's where, um, actually, I think I, I pushed that through. LB selected should have been, I failed on my slide, but yeah. The, <laughs> we forgive uh, you, Jason. Yeah. yeah. On the on the picking the server now, that's where the LB selected event is going gonna, is gonna to fire. Mm -hmm. And then server connected, then all this stuff happens on the back end here where now it's establishing that TCP connection. Obviously, if you have one connect, that TCP connection is probably already established. Uh, but then that request goes back to the server and then it handles that connection. And then that response then uh, fires back to the big IP. And if you want to manipulate that on the big IP, you can do it there as well and then sends it back to uh, the client. So that's the event cycle for an iRule. Beautiful, beautiful. So yeah, a lot going on there. And you know, like Jason said, there's a lot of different uh, times that these I rules can fire. So I mean, you talk about the power and the flexibility of these things. It's absolutely incredible. Um, so some fundamentals though, variables. In an I rule, you're gonna need to set variables, right? And a variable is, uh, you know, many of you I'm sure have dealt with variables before, but if you haven't, it's, a, it's this uh, piece of data in memory. It's something that represents something else, right? Um, and it needs to be declared or referenced um, before uh, it's it's handled, you know, with with this info exist or catch commands, right? You can see there on the on the slide. So there's a there's a way to set the variable. You can just say set and then name the variable. In this case, on the slide, it says my var, my var, my variable, whatever. Uh, and then you can and then you can uh, say what the value of that variable is. And then if you want to retrieve the variable later on in the I rule, then you can use the dollar sign symbol. Um, and so you can just see there in, the, in this example, there's a log statement saying, hey, I want to log whatever the whatever the uh, the value of my var is. And you would use that little dollar sign. And then you can unset the variable later on. If you're like, hey, I'm done with my var. I need to unset this thing. I'm going to release it back to the to the wild. Um, then you can use the, the command unset and it releases that 
variable and so it won't be used anymore. So those are just a few few ways to, to uh, work with variables. All right. And then on the uh, on the command um, in, in tickle, everything's a command. So you have the command and then an argument and then argument, argument, whatever. So there's a command and then an argument to that command, right? So, um, so you can yeah, see just, there. Just real quick to interrupt. Yeah, you see some of those iRules commands where you, you have your initial namespace and then like fifty different commands you can, I mean, arguments that you can string along. So that the argument list can get pretty extensive. It's uh, no doubt. Which that I will say that that needs to go back to where you need to comment your code because if it's crazy long, you know, arguments in your in your uh, command or command arguments, then that's where it's like, man, what is going on here? So you know. Do us all a favor and tell us what's going on here, right? Um, but anyway, but you can see there that uh, that you you have a command and then an argument to that command. So in he, in this uh, specific example, you're saying set foo, which is the variable, and then the uh, and then the the value for that is bar, and then you can log it, and then you know all the all the different arguments that come along with that, um, and then you can see that the the commands that act on data there. Uh, you can set numbers, you can uh, you can log, you can do expressions, which are the mathematical formulas that come into play, which we'll talk about here in just a little bit. So um, so anyway, so there's commands that you'll see uh, that you can, you know, you can act on these variables and, and other uh, other parts of, of iRules. All right. And under the hood, if you if you look at one of those where you have the command of log and then a big long string that you're going to log, what's happening on, um, under the hood? is that you know you have your command but actually that's what's going to be done last because you, you kind of go from the inside out and so it's going to look at this string and you have the the client uh, but it can't resolve lookup until it actually has whatever you're going to look up which in this case is another command that needs to be evaluated so it's going to evaluate that ip address before the resolve lookup happens and then it's going to do that again for the server uh, as well and then when all that information has been evaluated and uh, and presented in its final form, then the log command triggers. And so that's just kind of a look at, at how that's happening on the stack, um, you know, under the hood. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's always good to know what, what goes on underneath the hood of this thing. Um, okay, another another fundamental is these uh, this this idea of conditionals. So if this exists or if this this uh, you know condition uh, is true, then you do this. If it's false, then you do this. It's the it's the typical flow chart, but you'll see that a lot in I rules. You know, if this certain thing happens, um, then you do this thing, and and else you do this thing. Uh, there is a there is the if then else. So some of the syntactic uh, you know nuances there. You can say if then, or you could just say if and then else. Uh, for the uh, you know for the, uh, the kind of the fallback um, position. So uh, so anyway, but that but the idea here is is that I rules act in this way um, that you know if if a certain condition is true, then you take this action, else take this action, kind of a thing. So you'll see that a lot for sure. So then the operators, the here's another fundamental, these operators, they are uh, uh, typically they compare two strings. You can see there on the slide, these uh, these operators work on true false mechanisms. They allow conditions to be met or not uh, before they're considered true. So you can see that that there's a variety of operators that we can work with here. Um, and I won't list them all. But, you know, if 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 uh, I'll, I'll just look at that first one there, you know, if the HTTP host value contains this certain string, then act on it, right? Then do something with that. Uh, so you can see there, you can use the operator of contains or ends with or starts with or, you know, equals. Um, there's a whole variety of these things. So there's a lot of different ways to manipulate these variables or, man, um, or manipulate the, uh, you know, the data that's flowing through the big IP uh, via an I rule. So you can take you can take action. There's just a lot of flexibility that you have uh, to work with uh, work with this data. For sure. And it's not a fundamental thing, but I'll point it out that, uh, you know, there is a difference between using like an EQ versus the, you know, the equal signs uh, mm -hmm. back to back. And and that's, you know, whether you're looking at strings or, or wanting to look at, at numbers, 
And so if you know you're going to be comparing string to string, you'd want to use the EQ. If you know you're going to be doing numbers, you can use the the uh, you know the equal sign equal sign uh, because that uh, works with the the way it's interpreted, and it doesn't have to you know it doesn't have to guess. And that's one of the challenges with with in, interpreted languages or, or uh, you know at least dynamically typed languages is that uh, you know it has to guess at, at what you're comparing, and so you know. Uh, be careful about that. But again, that's not a fundamental thing. Your eye rules will still work. Yep. All right. So math real quick. Math is uh, performed in eye rules using the, the expression command or the EXPR command, uh, but it can be expensive. And so if you look at timing these two different ways, if you don't wrap your, your, um, your expressions, you can look at the, uh, the, the level of CPU cycles. Now, again, one microsecond is not a big deal. But at wire speed, when you have potentially millions of, of connections coming through per second, that adds up. Now, as an employee of F5, if you want to be inefficient with your eye rules, therefore buying more F5 gear, which puts <laughs> more money in my pocket, awesome. I love it. But, you know, we care about the way, the right way to do things. And so right. wrapping your expressions decreases the CPU cycles. And uh, and so, you know, you want to do that. And if you if you care at all, you can look at the byte code and you can notice that uh, on the command, the, the number of, of uh, actions going on when you're not wrapping is you know, obviously five, five times the, uh, uh, or five times the, the execution effort stacked mm -hmm. up is that is, is deeper. And, uh, and so, you know, if you wrap them, it's like, boom, done because it's, it's working into something that has already been, uh, compiled and, and done for you in the, in the innards of, of TCL. So, yeah. So those are kind of two, that. those are kind of the two columns there, right, Jason? So the one on the left is not wrapped and the one on the right is wrapped. And so you can kind of see the difference there. Yep. Right. Okay. <clears throat> Perfect. All right. So iteration, let's iter let's iterate this thing a little bit, right? Let's <laughs> take the next step. Um, so looping and iterations are something that you can do if you want to do something over and over again. Let's say you have a long list of something and you just kind of want to work your way all the way through it and check and see what all's in that thing and that list or whatever. There, there are kind of three main ways to iterate through, you know, lists or, uh, or that type of thing. So the first is a for loop and you can see it there, you know, listed kind of there in the middle of your screen uh, where you would set a variable, you would set a condition in terms of the length um, or the, the value as it were, and then you would increment that, uh, that variable. Um, and then that for loop would just go through, you know, that, uh, that list as it were, that, that number of, uh, of, you know, values until it reaches the end. Um, so a for loop is one way to do it. And then you can see the next one kind of listed there, nested down just a little bit is the for each, uh, you can set a variable and then you can do a for each, uh, loop through that as well. And so that just goes through all the values there that you've set. Uh, and then that last one that's kind of nested down even further is a while loop. So you set the variable and then you say, while this, uh, this value is true or while this condition is true, then take this action. And then you increment the, uh, the variable. And so it will go through, you know, the list. So those are three ways of doing, frankly, the exact same thing. There are, you know, there are pros and cons of, uh, of each approach, but, but you'll see, you know, those, those three different uh, ways to iterate, or you can take advantage of those three as you write your own eye rules. That's right. And keep in mind that because it's an event loop, using a for loop to like delay actions is generally a bad idea. Uh, we have out of band uh, action, uh, commands like after to be able to, to, you know, wait on something. Mm. Cool. Yeah. Good point. All right. So, you know, Hey, it's an actual eye rule. We've talked about the eye rules. Here's an actual eye rule. We're going to press on because we're getting close on time and I actually want to introduce the challenge. That's um, right. But, you know, we'll we'll have this, uh, you know, available um, if you want to. This one basically does basic auth and an eye rule, so you don't have to build that in the back end. And, uh, and that's Super the cool. entirety. You could pull out the log statements. So the whole thing's, what, 10, 10 lines, and you've built basic auth into uh, a web experience. Pretty cool. That's super awesome, man. Yeah, that's a. There's an example of let's say I have an application that doesn't do any auth. You could do it in an eye roll. So there you go. That's one right. little example. All right. So here we go, everybody. Here's the scenario. Here's the situation. We got little Jimmy Packets, our uh, 
our Dev Central motto or our Dev Central, uh, you know, um, mascot, mascot, I should say, right? Yeah. <laughs> so he's been hanging out in Keystone, Colorado, because why not, right? Why would you not go skiing? Um, but then here comes bad actor Bob, man. Bob, you got to keep your eye on Bob. And he creates several clones of him and places him around the globe. There's, I mean, he's hopping around in Brazil, Australia. You can see all the different places, right? Um, bad actor Bob also infects other visitors from the numeric land of that IP address, that subnet slash 23. Um, and then the fine people of Celestial City. Celestial City are waiting for Jimmy Packets to arrive. They want to open their doors. They want to roll out the red carpet, right, for the mascot of Death Central. But you got to make sure that the gatekeeper, this is Mr. Big IP, this is where the eye rule is going to sit, is going to allow only the real Jimmy Packets to come in, right? So again, bad actor Bob, he's created a bunch of clones. There's a bunch of like, you know, hey, hey, I'm Mr. Jimmy Packets. I'm Jimmy Packets. I'm Jimmy Packets. All these people are acting like Jimmy Packets, but there's only one real Jimmy Packets. So the problem is if the big IP doesn't have any idea how to distinguish or differentiate among all these different clones, how's he going to know the real thing, right? So you have to equip the big IP. You have to, you have to install this eye rule, this logic that says, hey, I'm going to inspect every single person that comes in that says he's Jimmy Packets, but I'm only going to let the real one in. So how do you do that? Right. And that's the idea. That's the challenge. So, Jason, give us the details, my friend. That's right. Yeah. So we we have a, a link here. Celestial-city.devcentral.test. Everybody should be allowed through the gate because we're a welcoming community. Right. Of course. Unless unless the user agent has Jimmy Dash packets in the string. And the request is from one of the countries listed in the background information above. Mm -hmm. So as long as he's coming from any other country from those, uh, he's good to go. But but those five, we know that the clones are there. So bad, don't let them in. The and of course, works. if the source yeah. traffic matches the numeric land of that IP space, then you want to block them as well. If we've established that a clone has has enter, has tried to enter the gates, we want to make sure we respond to them let them know they're a clone because hey, does a clone know they're a clone? I don't know, but we're going to let them know. And so, and make sure you log to a remote system, their false identity, their IP address, their country of origin and their user agent. Uh -huh. And of course, because Jimmy packets uh, has had a rough ordeal with bad actor, Bob, we want him to go to easy street. He yes. wants to have a nice meal there. So make sure you route him to the easy street pool. Make sure everybody else goes to the welcome wagon. Okay. Nice. And then of course, if the domain is correct, the you know, the top level domain devcentral.test, but the subdomain is not celestial city, then we want you to log only the subdomain and re and uh, respond to the requester with a meme of your choice that they should not pass go, they should not collect $200 and how dare they try to come to a host that is not the correct one. That's so right. Be creative Our with that. Those are the details. We have that in an article that we're going to release uh, right after this show. And so mm -hmm. that'll be on Dev Central. You can go check out, get all the details. And uh, I'm going to release a solution to that effective next Wednesday. So if you have a solution, you want to send it to devcentral at f5.com. We'd love to see it. And uh, and we'll you know highlight that on the show next week uh, for, for the interesting solutions that may take a different approach from ours. Uh, lab requirements, you really just need a big IP with LTM. Uh, a lightweight ser web server is helpful for your testing. Uh, if you're clever, you can even do it without a web server. And of course, you need some HTTP clients, maybe a, a host entry in your uh, in your system of choice to be able to to do that testing. And of mm -hmm. course, a can do attitude. Of course, that's probably that may be the most important part. Although you do need the other things, <laughs> you do need, you can have a great attitude and no computer, and it's like, well, that's probably not going to work. Um, anyway, that's awesome, man. That's awesome. Well, hey, this is a lot of fun. This is where the community can really come and just say, hey, how do I do this? I am confident that some of you out there are iRule experts and you're like, oh, man, I got this thing. I can route Jimmy Packets over to Easy Street and block everybody else. And then some of you may be saying, hey, what in the world is an iRule? I just got into this thing. I've never even heard of an iRule before. Um, so to all of you, I would say welcome. And this is this is why we want to come together. And uh, I think it, it takes everybody. It takes all the experts and all the beginners. And we've all, we've all, well, we've all been at the beginning. Maybe not all of us. If, <laughs> I'm still looking, I'm still trying to be an expert one day, you know, when I grow up. 
Um, but uh, but yeah, I want to just encourage everybody to, to give it a shot, you know. And and drop comments on the article on Dev Central. I'll be happy to to drop some hints and and help along the way, um, you know. But yeah, that's the I rule challenge. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed today. Coming next week, we have a fantastic guest. Timo Stark's going to join us uh, for a demo, and we're going to recap Nginx Sprint. So mm-hmm. that's going to be amazing. Uh, two weeks from today, I'm back with You Want Answers, and I'm going to continue the I rule theme. It's like, you know, to rule or not to I rule. That is the question. Whether it's <laughs> Snowblower the Mines, to right. suffer the slings and arrows, dot, 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 dot. Um, you know, maybe I'll come up with a, a, a clever, uh, you know, parody poem of that uh, famous soliloquy. And yes. uh, But anyway, yeah, to rule or to not I rule. And then uh, <laughs> then we're, we're going to be in space. Not really, but I would love it. Uh, but we're gonna uh, we have a fantastic guest on September 9th uh, to to talk uh, with uh, a gentleman from the the you know JPL uh, Jet Propulsion Lab. Uh, can't wait to have him. It's gonna be great. And uh, and then you have security sidebar after that, John. That's right. That's right. Digital as default. What does that even mean? And what are some of the security implications around that? So that's gonna be a lot of fun. Yep. So. Anyway, that's uh that's what's coming. Hope you had a good time today. We're so excited to be here and we'll see you out there in the queue. Make sure if you enjoy content like this, you click the like below and you and you subscribe for the future content that we'll have coming your way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't don't just don't just like or subscribe. You need to destroy the subscribe <laughs> button. Crush that thing. Or write an eye rule that just makes you subscribe over and over and over. So that would be awesome. <laughs> good deal. Well, hey, man, it's been a lot of fun today, Jason. That's, uh, and I hope I hope everyone out there has had a good time. Maybe maybe you'll uh, participate in the challenge. We would love for you to do that and see everyone's uh, work coming in. So um, it's been another great time, Jason. Absolutely. Take care, John. We'll see you right back here next week. Next time. We'll see you guys. Have a great day.